Fire Services. Is this Hello. Chief Brooks? You're yes. Up. Thank you, Mayor, City Manager, Council. Uh, Chief Brooks couldn't be here tonight. Ask me to step in for him. Uh, ask an approval for purchase of four new SCBA masks to be bought with the city's portion of the county sales tax. Uh, <laughs> amount not to exceed $3,180. Uh, these are replacing the masks that have become worn out. Uh, we got some face seals that's ripped, causing safety issues. Uh, some lenses are scratched, impairing their vision, and these are being replaced. Any questions or comments? Uh, uh, I've, got I've got one. Uh, what is the monthly allocation mm -hmm. to the fire department? How much are they given? Uh, yes. uh, it varies From based average, on. What is? What is uh, give me one sec. Okay. Uh, looks like most of the time it's around 6,200. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? I'd take a motion and a second to approve. Motion Council Reed, second by Mr. Stevens. Any discussion? Courage Colorado, please. Councilman Reed? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Pritchard? Yes. Smith? Yes. Mayor? Yes, and the motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> We're on to agenda item number two. Consider an act upon rescinding resolution number 19-22 that originally set the 2020 council election dates. Is your score or is it going to repeat? It's Miss Middleton's. Okay. I knew it was going to be that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was contacted by the <coughs> county election board secretary saying that when they went to enter our election dates in their system, it would not accept them. So she finally was able to contact the assistant state secretary of the, ele of the uh, state election <coughs> board assistant secretary. And the, they reviewed the dates, and she gave them the new dates that we have, we have for the next. And we have to rescind the one that was approved originally, so they can remove it out of their files. Okay, so essentially they, they said that we couldn't do it on these dates because they're the wrong dates. We need to the, the yes. set new dates. Yes. Okay. Any, any questions? Councilman oh, Brown? No, I'm just going to make a motion. To okay. uh, motion, Councilman Brown. Second Councilman Reed. Any discussion? <clears throat> Corbett, call the roll, please. Councilman Brown? Yes. Reed? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Richard? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Mayor? Yes, and the motion carries. <clears throat> We're on to agenda item number three. Consider an act upon approving a new resolution setting the corrected election dates <laughs> towards 135 and mayor. And pretty well self explanatory, right? So. <clears throat> Any anybody have any questions, Councilwoman Harrison? Uh, is the filing fee uh, still free? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> any other questions? I take a motion and a second to approve. Motion, Council Smith. Second, Councilman Brown. Any further discussion? Before would you call? <laughs> would you call the roll, please? Councilman Smith. Yes. <laughs> yes. Harrison. Yes. Richard. Yes. Stevens. Yes. Reed. Yes. Mayor. Yes, and the motion carries. We are on to agenda item number four, discussion and update on financials. Ms. Swift and Ms. Irvin. Mayor, Council, I just want to introduce Sherry Swift. She has formerly worked at the City of McAllister. She's our new CFO, but when she worked here before, she was our Chief Accountant, and we're really glad to have her back. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, Mayor, uh, council members, uh, what we're going to discuss in your packet uh, is what you've always seen or what you've grown accustomed to seeing. Um, in the very first report, we have our financial summary um, through the uh, October 31st, which is 33% of our year so far, and uh, shows that our revenues are a little bit um, under budget. Um, expenditures are a little bit over, just a tad over. And then the MPWA um, fund at a glance, <clears throat> we're showing revenues uh, below and also the expenditures below. <clears throat> our next report that we have uh, is our financial update. This report is uh, showing our sales tax uh, revenue 
and we are reporting through November, which is basically for October sales. Um, pretty steady, um, a little bit higher than last year, um, but we do see that, uh, that that's um, steadily growing there for right now. Um, the next report you'll find is the um, budgeted versus actual uh, reporting on the sales tax. Um, let's see, for the actuals, um, still under budget for all of those uh, items there through, again, through November. <coughs> Our use tax, um, we kind of, looks like we budgeted a little bit aggressively there, but uh, again, it's under budget for use tax, but we do uh, anticipate that changing. It always does in the next coming months, being it's Christmas and, and end of year. Um, again, on the next report is the general fund revenue for the use tax. Uh, we see it steadily increasing uh, year after uh, month after month. We um, don't see any, really any problems with that. Uh, next report is the MPW revenues, the water sales for residential and commercial is the first top of the graph um, through October, um, up over last year, but not as much as we need uh, or that it has been in the past. Uh, water districts are reporting um, both September and October um, lower than usual. Um, we uh, have knowledge of, of a rural water district that is changing out some large meters to um, being replaced in some large areas um, that could be contributing to that lower percentage. And then the final report is our treasury report um, that uh, lets you know that our <clears throat> cash that we have on hand. <clears throat> Any questions? Anybody questions, comments? Councilman okay. Harrison? I, I've got a question. <clears throat> Could you explain the difference between the water sales and uh, water districts and wholesale? Um, the water sales is going to be uh, residential uh, customers, commercial customers. Okay. And then the wholesale is going is our water districts that we have outside. Like the rural? Mm -hmm. okay. The rural districts. And, and could you name a few of those rural districts? District 5, I think it's south of town, okay. down by the casino, is uh, 7, I think it's 9. Maybe seven, yeah, 7, 9, 16, yeah. and uh, there's one other one, there's 5. There's yeah. 5 of them? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Can I make a comment? Yes. Uh, going back to use tax, I think that we've talked about this in the past, or I've talked about it in several committee meetings, but under use tax, we uh, we did budget very aggressive for that tax this year, and that was in anticipation of the shopping mall coming on online, all of those goods and services being purchased by the uh, uh, developer and having them dropped here in McAllister. That was going to increase our use tax uh, significantly. So we are uh, quite a bit under budget, about $600,000 under budget for use tax. Uh, but we anticipate that changing in the very near future. So I, I just wanted to point that out. That's a reason why we're uh, way under budget on our use tax this year. <clears throat> Any other questions? I've got a question. How, how do you expect it to be? Um, pay back or whatever, how, how is that going to happen? Uh, we're anticipating that shopping center going forward. Okay. And that construction to begin and those supplies being delivered to McAllister. Mm -hmm. uh, we may run into a situation where some of it is delivered in this fiscal budget fiscal year budget and some of it's delivered in next year's fiscal year budget. So okay. what we will do is we'll adjust fiscal years uh, and, and We'll take care of it through two different fiscal years instead of the one fiscal year. Oh, and it's going okay. to come through two. Uh, yes. So thank you. <clears throat> if necessary. <clears throat> now, any more questions? 
Uh, in that case, we'll move to new business. Any matter, oh, thank you. Uh, any matter not known or which could not have been reasonably foreseen prior to the time of posting the agenda in accordance with uh, section 311.9, Title 25 of the <coughs> statutes. Do we have anything new? We do not, Mayor. In that case, we will go to the city manager's report. Uh, yesterday, um, we were working a construction project out at the uh, water plant, uh, replacing the 20 inch water line. <laughs> Uh, that line has been installed yesterday. We were making one of the tie-ins closest to the to the plant and capping off the old line. Uh, in order to do that, we had the system filled with water. Uh, the all the towers were full. Uh, the the clear well at the at the plant was full. In anticipation of about an eight-hour shutdown, uh, we were down yesterday about five to six hours, which uh, caused the towers to get get low. Uh, during that process, when they were cutting in those lines, we got some sediment in the, in the lines. I uh, added some uh, what I call tea-colored water uh, is what was being experienced in the city. Uh, last night, we were out trying to flush the lines. Um, we were back making water. We were flushing the lines, uh, working to clear out the lines and everything uh, this morning. So the towers are still uh, relatively low. At four o'clock this morning, we had a chemical line feed at the plant rupture. Uh, we had to isolate that line. We had to shut the plant down. The plant was down for another five to six hours this morning. Uh, we continued to uh, use a lot of water here in the city without being able to replace it. And in addition to that, uh, when they got the plant back on, we'd also experienced two water line breaks down on uh, F and Delaware. And so it's been, uh, it's been a day and a half for everybody. Uh, right now they're, they're finishing up, uh, fixing the uh, second water line break. I don't know if it's completed yet, but they were out there taking care of it. Uh, the line at the plant has been repaired. Uh, the chemical line feed at the plant's been repaired. We are making water, uh, but we're in a situation right now, but by the time they turned the plant back on and started shipping back to the city, uh, everybody gets home about five o'clock at night, and if they've got water, they're using it. And so we really don't anticipate uh, the towers to start filling until probably after nine or ten o'clock tonight when people start going to bed. But by tomorrow morning, we should be in pretty good shape. Wanted to give you that update. Uh, also wanted to give you an update on the 5th and Miami sewer project. This was a community line that we're replacing. Council approved that contract about a month ago in the amount of $49,475. Wanted to let you know that uh, the contractor is mobilizing next week and we anticipate construction of that project taking about 30 days. So that's a good, good news moving forward. So we've got several projects that are moving forward. Um, yesterday we just, yesterday and today we ran into problems. So we're trying to take care of it as rapidly as we can. <coughs> That's it. <coughs> we are on to uh, remarks and increase by city oh, council. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, what is the status <laughs> on the water at the public library? I saw that they, they're, they had to close because they didn't have water. As I just reported, we okay. have low water pressure so, citywide. So they just had to go ahead and just shut down. Uh, if that's is if that's their policy and okay. procedure, then yes, okay, they Thank would you. have done that. Okay. All right, now, <clears throat> remarks and inquiries by City Council. Council Smith, Vice Mayor Stevens, um, Mr. Stasiak, weren't we at on? And remind me because it's been a few days now on the electric meters, the ones that we were installing. Are we through with that first phase of doing that? On water the water meters, the water meters, yes, the electronic yes, water yes, meters. Yeah, that that project is that project is completed. We <laughs> put about when that was under contract to put in, I believe, about three thousand, which mm -hmm. was half of the residential uh, mm -hmm. population of the city. That project has been completed. Any time that we change out meters uh, in the future because we have bad meters or whatever, they're all replaced with electronic meters. We have probably replaced hundreds of them since that program ended. Okay. Um, our goal is that, uh, what the council allowed us to do there was to borrow a million dollars to be repaid over a five year period of time. We're probably coming up on the end of two years at the end of this five years. And we'll be coming back with the second plan 
with to the council to finish up all those electronic meters in the city. Okay, I couldn't remember. Thank yeah, you. no, it's 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 a process that we've been going through, but okay. uh, they're actually working very well. Uh, I've had a situation at my house where I've gone downstairs, or they've notified me that I had a leak uh, just because of constant co uh, consumption mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that I was unaware of. And so the system seems to be working well. Good. Um, then last question for you. Can you tell me just ballpark how much is being generated by the sales tax for infrastructure? Yes. Uh, I think this year's budget is $2,178,000. And I don't know what the dollars and cents are. That's, that's pretty fine. close. No, that's fine. About $2.2 million is what's being generated by that uh, half cent. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You bet. Councilman Reed. Uh, I'd just like to uh, wish my fellow council members a happy Thanksgiving and uh, the city employees and citizens a uh, safe and happy Thanksgiving. <clears throat> <clears throat> Councilman Brown. Yes, sir. I'll echo the same sentiment. Uh, I'm going to brag on the Buffaloes. Even though we lost in the <laughs> first round, the second round, playoffs, those boys were fired up. I was fired up like I wanted to get a uniform. <laughs> I know that would like, make about one play. But uh, I wanted to, you know, really congratulate them on the dedication and hard work. And the cheerleaders, they went up. Everybody had a great time. They took off about noon. And, uh, you know, just had a great season. And we'd take up a collection to buy you a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I could all pay to see it. <laughs> <laughs> and a happy Thanksgiving to all the council members and uh, their families and the city workers and their families. Right, Councilman Harrison. Okay. Um, again, I'll reiterate thank you uh, to. Uh, and happy Thanksgiving to everyone here. Uh, my special appreciation to Reverend Williams for uh, accepting the uh, uh, invitation to come pray and Austin Kinnatubby and his family. And then also I wanna thank uh, Mayor Brown, uh, the city council, city manager, Pete Stasiak and everyone who expressed their condolences on the passing of my brother. That's why I wasn't here at the last meeting. Uh, I want to also thank everyone, um, especially uh, uh, Mrs. Middleton and the and the city council for the proclamations that were uh, given last month as a result and the McAllister uh, news capital as a result of those proclamations and the coverage that the newspaper have given it's been invaluable and it's been helping a lot of the people in the community and for those of you that don't remember is breast cancer awareness and I have a friend she's the principal of a, a William Gay school she is uh, battling breast cancer so i give a shout out to kathy hunt and domestic violence um it's my understanding that the McAllister police department has really been instrumental in helping some uh, victims some as recently as last week uh the old town uh the old town uh, business they're participating in the vintage uh, program and also the city of McAllister that's happening on uh next week in december and remember everyone to shop local Thank you. <clears throat> Councilman Pritchard. Um, I have a question about this. I assume everyone, everyone get this. Um, it's for the city attorney. What I don't, um, I've got a question about this, uh, case down here, this fine airport parking be Tulsa. Um, <coughs> so this opinion, if I'm reading it right, seems to suggest this is about the hospital ordinance that we dealt with last week or last meeting. Um, now this, this uh, piece of paper <laughs> seems to suggest that this fine case works against our proposed ordinance. Is that, am I reading that correctly? I think that's uh, the purpose of the gentleman citing that in his opinion. That With opinion is from uh, Mr. Vandenberg. Uh, we requested it from OML and at that particular time they did not have an attorney and so they farmed it out to him i think he's the city attorney at pa uh, pahuska or pawnee okay it's just how do you because if i remember incorrectly the hospital's attorney whose name i can't remember cited this case well, as I support think she for distinguished the between federal mm -hmm. liability and there's no of state liability, but we have uh, three pro provisions in our state constitution that deal with restraint of trade. 
and we have a restraint of trade uh, or a uh, statute that do, do apply. And that was one of the things that he pointed out that uh, in the definition section of the statute, both the city and the hospital authority trust come within that act. So to say that we are not subject to restraint of trade is not accurate. And I think what she this was saying state was restraint of trade. a legal term, which was state action, uh, was, uh, was exempt from federal. Uh, and that's not unlike <coughs> DEQ acting to enforce all the policies and regulations of UPA, you know, they formed it out to the states. But I think we are subject to restraint of trade. And I, and I think that's what that case is cited for. And this, this attorney, Mr. Vandenberg, he thinks that we could be liable for treble damages and well, he, criminal he sanctions. points out several flaws, uh, some of which do appear in that Stillwater Ordinance and that Norman Ordinance. We are trying to, and we will present that to the city, uh, to the uh, council here before long next month, I guess, uh, for adoption. But we're trying to wire around the complaints uh, that he points out in his opinion. Okay. So, thank you. I do want to just follow up on that because that, in that case, <laughs> Ryan versus the state, the, for the city of Tulsa, it had to do with part, uh, Tulsa setting the parking rates and the taxi rates, I believe, at the at the airport, and Fine brought suit against them, and Fine actually won the suit. So it's kind of, I mean, it's very confusing when both sides are citing it. Uh, yes, I, I know she cited that as one of her authorities, but Mr. Vandenberg also cited it as a an example of restraint of trade. Yeah. Uh, Although the court found on fines we have. So that's, I mean, that seems to be an odd site for him to use. Well, I think, I think we, uh, we need to try to wire around those laws that he pointed out in his ordinance. And I think we are, uh, have done that, uh, but that will be for you all to consider when we, when we bring that to you. That, initiative was brought on by the hospital is my understanding it was before i was the city attorney but uh, it's my understanding that the local hospital was the one that uh, initiated this action so so this you're not the mr Irvin on this email yes the other, you're the mr okay. yes i am no I just wanted to point out the hospital's attorney is going back through this and uh, constructing her arguments to go around it also. Well, I hope they have our ordinance now, uh, you know, at one of our meetings, and that was one of the purposes of that, of that email was to, to inform the council members that we've been meeting periodically on this thing since last year. Now, if the council or any members wish to be involved in that process, they, they certainly are entitled to. And uh, I think all you'd have to let do is let the city manager know, because we've had meetings with the mayor, we've had meetings with the city manager, we've had meetings with the hospital administrator. Uh, so, you know, it's been an ongoing process. This thing last month was, <laughs> I don't know, we were not prepared to adopt a uh, ordinance for the city at that point. And, not, and I would have, had we, had they proposed that we do so, I would certainly have, have uh, spoken up to say that no, uh, those are problem areas that we need to address and it should not be the, the city's position. Yeah, there seems to be a breakdown of communication over these many months. So hopefully that'll get straightened out <clears throat> in the next month or so. Yeah, because there were essentially two different ordinances, one that the hospital originally came out with and then the one that we right. answered back with. Which is a good ordinance in many respects. 
I forgot something. I wanted to mention the uh, lights down uh, Carl Albert. Seems like they're even better than last year. And they were good last year. So I'm ready to thank the uh, city for doing that. Your people. It's a lot of lights. Councilman Pritchard, I cut you off. I didn't oh, ask if you were done. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're on to uh, mayor's comments and committee appointments. Uh, first, uh, Vice Mayor Stevens contacted me early last week and was t asking about uh, the about recycling and curbside recycling. And uh, we, you know, in in the past, <clears throat> Pride and McAllister and the Choctaw Nation were working together on that. And um, so I, I informed uh, Councilman Stevens that if he would be willing to serve, that I would like to appoint him as a liaison to that committee for the City Council, so that he can report back to us uh, with uh, any 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 movement or updates. So. Okay. Uh, next, I want to say the developer finally closed on the property on 14th Street, so we're moving forward with that. Finally, uh, it's a uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a good thing for the city of McAllister. Um, also, I want to uh, echo on Councilman Reed's happy Thanksgiving to uh, everyone up here, plus everyone out there, and especially mm -hmm. to the city employees because. You know, they, they really do a phenomenal job. Um, I was working with a couple of them today, getting ready for the downtown Christmas that will be coming up very soon. And I think people are going to be as good as it was last year. It's gonna be incredible this year. So it's uh, something for everybody to really look forward to. <clears throat> with that, we will recess the council meeting and I would take a motion to convene as McAllister Airport Authority. <coughs> <clears throat> Motion to include approval of minutes for November 20, no, November 12th, 2019, regular meeting of the Calster Airport Authority, confirm action taken on City Council agenda item C, D, and adjourn. Motion Councilman Smith, second Councilman Reed. Any discussion? Courage call the roll, please. Councilman Smith? Yes. Reed? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Richard? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Mayor? Yes. <clears throat> uh, motion carries. <clears throat> so now take a look. <clears throat> Dang it. Take a motion to convene as McAllister Public Works Authority. Motion to include approval of minutes from the November 12, 2019 regular meeting of the McAllister Public Works Authority. Confirm action taken on uh, City Council agenda item C, D, and to adjourn. Motion to Councilman Smith, second Councilman Reed. Any discussion? Courage call the roll, please. Councilman Smith? Yes. Reed? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Richard? Yes. Mayor. Yes, and the motion carries. And now take a motion to convene as McAllister Retirement Trust Authority. <clears throat> motion to include include approval of minutes from the October 22nd, 2019 regular meeting of the McAllister Retirement Trust Authority. Confirm action taken on City Council agenda item D. Approval of retirement benefit payments for the period of November 2019 and to adjourn. <coughs> motion Councilman Brown, second Councilman Reed. <clears throat> Any discussion? Courage, call the roll, please. Councilman Brown? Yes. Reed? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Pritchard? Yes. Smith? Yes. Mayor? Yes, and the motion carries. I would now take a motion to convene as McAllister Economic Development Authority. Motion to include approval of minutes from the May 28, 2019 regular meeting of the McAllister Economic Development Authority. Motion, Councilman Reed. Second, Councilman Smith. Any discussion? Courage, call the roll, please. Councilman Reed? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Richard? Yes. <laughs> yes, and the motion carries. I now take a motion to consider and act to convene an executive session as the Board of Trustees of the Economic Development Authority, a public trust pursuant to Title 25, Oklahoma State, sta state Section, sta Statute Section 307C11 for the purpose of discussing an economic development prospect considering that public disclosure of the matter discussed would interfere with the development of such a pros prospect. Motion oh Councilman Reed, second Councilman Smith, any discussion? <coughs> Court, would you call the roll, please? Councilman Reed? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Richard? Yes. Mayor? Yes, and we're now in executive session. Mm -hmm.